The following is a presentation of iRacing.com Motorsport Simulations on LSR TV, the voice of sim racing. Live tonight from the Eldora Speedway, LSR TV, happy to be with you to say good evening, Sim Racing fans, and welcome to the final race on this Outlaw Racing Series Top Step Trader Late Model Dirt Series tonight from Rossburg, Ohio. We get set to go race it for the longest race on this championship in tonight's Eldora Championship 100. Happy to have you with us on this Tuesday afternoon at LSR TV and to I raise it up top with you as always myself Evan Pasoka alongside with Austin Coop going to be bringing you the call start to finish through 100 laps of action tonight and also downstairs is the lovely and talented Cisco Scaramuza twisted and tweaking the dials to bring it us to you this evening and Coop always fun when we get to have a special event here on LSR TV and it's a little bit more exciting on top of that when we get to do it out on a dirt track and we come to the home of dirt racing and auto racing showcase since 1954 the Big E Eldora Speedway the side of tonight's season finale yeah, big race for sure, and we're going to be putting the super late models uh, to the test with 100 laps. So with those 2,200-pound uh, cars, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a long race for these guys, and uh, these cars can take it. They can take a real big beating in the corners, and uh, with as famous and as uh, you know virtuosic as Eldora is, it's really going to be a test uh, for these guys. They've got six races under the belt, and uh, having the longest race of the season, like you just said here at Eldora uh, with the uh, point standing still on the line for these guys. Yeah, we come into tonight as the seventh and final race on this Top Step Trader Late Model Dirt Series Championship. What a week ago, it was Matt Paddock who took home the win from Williams Grove Speedway, led all the laps top to bottom to take home the win. It allowed him to gain two spots in the championship. So let's look at the championship standings. He jumped up from fourth to second. It still means that he is 73 points behind your current championship leader in Jordan DePauli. The problem is... Polly is not currently registered for this final race. And 100 points for a win, 73 point different between first and second. If it remains as that, Paddock's number 51. 51 machine sorry could in theory take over the championship and walk out of tonight with the hardware there's other battles that are going to be for positions inside of the top 10 and you can see all those intervals the likes of heaven black crate adam zach brandon cut scott garbanski cole borkstadt simon thorns neil Amstick, and mason lynch to the top 10 all of that is going to be up for play but obviously coop we have to look at the top of the championship standings and wonder if paul is going to get on the racetrack yeah, it's going to be a pretty big deal because he can uh, definitely eat up that 73-point gap if uh, Polly does not uh, does not show. And uh, 73 points typically is a lot larger in a uh, in other series like a uh, NASCAR series or for say, uh, but 73 points in this series when you get 100, you could you know eat up a gap like that in, in a single race. So that that'll be the story. Is that it looks like uh, qualifying has finished up and these guys will be getting on here pretty soon. They're going to double up behind the pace truck down on the pit lane. So let's go track on and take a look at your LSR TV starting grid for tonight's Eldora Championship 100. The starting position in this race determined by heat races earlier on in the evening. Your scoring is going to show that on a three of Brandon Cuts at the top of the line. He will not start this race on a pole position. We're going to end at the longest line to drop on through to the back. So that would effectively give the 27 of Ashton Crowder a pole position. He's scored in second at the moment. You've got Brett Leidenhoff and Scott Gabranski back on row two. They'll start third and fourth, respectively. And an ever-familiar name here on LSR TV, Chase Cabry is fifth. Starting in that sixth position is going to be Matt Paytack. And then Craig, as, uh, Adam, Adam Zach will start in the seventh position. Evan Black starts in the eighth position. Leiden Pina will start in the ninth position. Chaz Bedford starts in tenth. Cole Regstrat 
would start in the 11th position. Simon Tor Thornes will start in 12th, and Mason Lynch will start in 13th. But look top to bottom at your LSR TV starting grid. Again, the 27 effectively becomes your control car for tonight's race at the Eldora Speedway. This racetrack clock it in at a half a mile in length means that tonight's 100 lap made event is going to be 50 miles between the start and the end of this one. It's dirt late model racing at LSR TV, and we're happy that you're spending your afternoon with us here on your home for sim race. The pace truck is going to go down and in. Let's get a little bit dirty from the Eldora Speedway green flag flies and we're late model race into turn number one yeah he's gonna have a good start look at the number four he's already gonna be on the outside side by side here for the lead already that four car is really hooked up on the outside but it's really the bottom at the moment with the way the track is to be there but look at that four Chase Caber he's gonna be right there still side by side in the corners and there's a mess behind him Couple of cars gonna get turned around the double O gonna go backwards. Scott Kapransky had a bad start. Got into the outside fence on the opening lap of this race. He's turned around and turned one as the battle for the race lead continues. Cabri got it that time before. Caution to flag is just now gonna come out immediately after Ashton Crowder got him back with a crossover down in turns one and two. So as we check things up for the first time tonight, the 27 should be able to retain the race lead as it got really chaotic back there around P5. Yeah, and that caution needed to come out because the double zero of Scott Gabrinsky, he was uh, still sideways, uh, or still backwards really on the track, still trying to get it uh, turned around. And uh, when the car is stuck like that in the middle of the track and then these guys are coming back, uh, it's uh, it was really close for these guys. If a caution didn't come out, what they would do. So caution definitely needed to come out right there as the leaders were approaching it. But just a huge stack up there in turns one and two caused that accident. And you expect to see that a little bit at a place like the Eldora Speedway. It is a very wide racetrack, a lot of options, a lot of lines that are lended to you to make a couple of different decisions. But it was really clogged back there around that number five spot. And you saw how Kapransky got turned around after the first bits of contact. He got into the car in front of him and then got tagged from behind. It's not easy to get these dirt late models turned around either by any means, which is why he struggled to get that car straighted and get himself back underway. So we brought in line behind the IRAs at official pace truck. And we get set to restart this race. 11 drivers going to be scored on the lead lap. Drivers that did take time at a heat races earlier on tonight, but did not take the green flying Simon Thorns at Mason Lynch, 12th and 13th. Do not make it to the racetrack. It looks like we get set to double things uh, back up, or at least line them back up behind the pace truck to get back it away. Yeah, something nice about dirt is that they've uh, featured a shorter caution period. So these guys should be going green this time by. It looks like they'll be getting single file here coming to the green. Pace truck will be coming on um, three and four. And these guys will be ready to go back again with about uh, six laps in the books. And you see the number 27. He'll protect the outside of the racetrack as we go back under green from Eldora. Single file restarts means that things are going to get a lot more spread out. Look at Crowder all the way up to the top of the racetrack. Meanwhile, Cabri slides on the inside. Still single file at the top four. And you can see those two different lines in three and four. The top two drivers on the top third and fourth deciding to take the bottom. Yeah, the, uh, the number four of Chase, he got really out of shape there coming out of four. And he lost a lot of Nash and Crowder and a lot of those three drivers behind him. That's going to be uh, 97 to 93. And the 12 of Leidenhoff, he's right there as well. And so it's going to be like a four-car battle behind first place. It looks like side-by-side -side for fourth just momentarily as the top five is kind of uh, breaking away from everyone else. You can see the side-by-side -side with the 12 of Leidhoff on the outside, and it's Kratz at the bottom trying to challenge him. This racetrack has been carried over from the practice of the heat races, so you especially see it on those onboard shots right there into the corner. That dark clay up at the top of the racetrack has been rubbered in, and there's just no grip up there. You can see drivers trying to go just above it or just below it, because really that's in the middle of the racetrack. So this racetrack is not as fast now as it was earlier on in the evening, and you can really see it in turn one there with that darkened up clay that that's been rubbered in just how slippery that is and it's going to keep side by side as it looks like Adam Zach now fighting with Cabri that four machine has really been liking that throw it in low and exit high not a lot of speed off of the corner tight with it on he's seven into 12. Yeah it looks like the high side really want to where you want to be and that number 97 had the bottom hooked up right, right in front of the four did one of those crossover moves and had it worked out but you just can't carry the momentum on the top side like you were talking about. You've got a little bit of a cushion there. Caution flag is going to wave, and so we'll have to put this on hold. 
And for the black issues in turn number two for the number 92 machine, we'll get a second look at this one in just a moment. He's turned around and the problem is he, he got tagged by a couple of drivers also after the initial piece of contact, but black ends up around and will slow things down for a second time tonight. Looks like he almost just lost it by himself. He tried to, I was talking about drivers going high and then low on all that slick stuff where it's been rubbered in and I think the 92 just went too low. Coop caught the fence and that's when he snapped back up in front of traffic Got tagged by a couple of cars. Yeah, also hitting the wall, and then also the fact that there's not much grip down there, uh, and not a lot of guys have been down there since practice. Uh, probably means that it's uh, it's rough and dirty down there, and not as slick, and uh, definitely can get the uh, car out of shape. So uh, you, you can really see that the two determining spots on the track is kind of the middle to high, and then the high itself, and then high to high to low. Uh, there's not really a low line by itself anymore. Uh, you have to kind of make a combination in order to make a pass or just to, you know, keep your position um, based on who what's going on behind you. So we check things in up once again, and it, nothing much changed up in the front row for that one. Uh, you do see that Cabri is able to jump up to second position. It's the spot that he occupied for the majority of that second run. And the lights go back out on top of the iRacing official pace truck. So we see the drivers line them up single file up by the outside of the racetrack. Crowder wants to protect the top, make sure that nobody's able to get around him. And he will control the restart. 15 laps down. Long way to go with 85 laps remaining for Maldor. Challenge for the race lead as Cabri looks to the inside of the racetrack but can't get the bite off. Yeah, and Cabri was really close that time on the race start. He had a time pretty well. That's uh, right behind Ashton Crowder. And Crowder, he's uh, doing back to back double uh, double duty. He was uh, running asphalt yesterday. Now he's running dirt, so it really doesn't play driver. Right Throwing three wide there for a second there for the lead. 12 on the bottom, four in the middle, and then 27 on top there with these guys. And so it's really cool to see that the number 27 is uh, busting out the late model here on, on the dirt after, uh, after what happened yesterday with him and still doing really well. And, I also see that 12 car coming in the picture, Leiden, Leiden Hoff, he's right there in the picture as well, and he started up in the uh, third position, still there, and uh, he's trying to make his way up. And you can see that there's no consensus on what the line's going to be. One lap, everybody going to go high next time by, or all the drivers going to send it low, and it was one lap ago to which we saw both Crowder up front and Cabri go to the bottom, and Leidhoff took the top side. Well, the last time in one and two, it was exactly the opposite. It's very difficult to get away from somebody at a racetrack like Eldora. You see the four slide to the inside once again, and he gets a good entry. He's able to bring it up alongside the 27. He just can't get the bite off and carry that momentum, and now you see the 12 of Leidhoff do the same and they're going to get it to swap these things out there is no doubt though that the top three are pulling away from everybody else's battle for the race lead 1.2 seconds in front of adam zach who occupies four and you're starting to see that dark area really start to come in in turns one and three uh, more turns one and then uh, turn three but that dark area is really uh, either where you really want to be or you, you want to stay away from and a lot of the drivers are using that to their advantage to sort of slide through the corner as much as possible with the speed and it looks like three and this time around is actually having those dark spots and i'll tell you that that's that's the best where they can really slow down 12 got the four right there that's gonna be position right here 12 gets the slide job done almost he's still side by side with the four he can go to get by him right here and that was a really really risky move to get into him and then to slide right in front of him when he committed to it. We've often seen these drivers go to the inside of the racetrack and they slide up, no doubt, but they've only been sliding up to about the middle end of the racetrack. They haven't actually decided to go up in front of that guy. That was a committed move by Laidhoff. Slid right up in front of the four of Cabri. Cabri could have laid on and got into the back of him, probably wrecked both of those cars, but it's a game of chicken or cat and mouse, if you will, early in a race like this. The four tried to look to back to his inside. It didn't work, and that's a beautifully executed move. Courtesy of the, uh, courtesy rather, the 12 car to be able to get up to second. The four's not going to lay off, though, but I think that he sat behind Cabri in third for a couple of laps and said, hey, I'm going to go up there and try this. And it's going to be difficult for him to make up time with Crowder when he's following right in the 27's tire tracks, but he is keeping him honest, and that gap may be slowly coming down. The 12 getting a little bit more comfortable with getting right up against the fence than your leader is. Yeah, he's running some of the fastest times uh, he had all day. That was actually his fastest lap that last time by, and Crowder's fastest lap was about uh, five laps to go, and was two uh, two tenths uh, was about the same as it was actually than that. The lead hop, he just ran one of his slowest laps actually in a little bit, but that 12 car, he's actually figuring it out as it goes, as opposed to having a really good car at the beginning. 
then it's really coming off. And I'd say that the 27 is actually pitched more in the corner than the 12, and I think that's where he's losing time. He's uh, throwing the car more in there, and that's where the 12 right now. He's catching him right now, and he's right there. You can see that 27 may have made a small mistake at a turn number two, and then you're going to be having a battle for the lead. 12 the inside, maybe a little no. They're getting really close. And at 27, really has to keep it up against the fence. Oh. Too high, though. Crowder into the outside wall. Twice, now three times, four times down the back. And Laidhoff is going to go to the race lead. Cavery going to slide job him in the center of the corner. And at 27, going to go from first to third in half a mile. And the interesting part about that was a 12 put on the inside. And I don't think he was expecting to get the pass executed. But sometimes you just have to be a little bit lucky at the track like these. And... I, I tell you, he's really consistent right now, and uh, that 12 car, he's, uh, every time he goes in the corner, it's almost the same. You were talking about how everybody's doing different lines. Well, the 12's not. He's basically doing the same thing every lap. Now, that's going to be a little bit of a bad thing if he continues to do it because the track's going to keep changing. You can see he's actually using that cushion right there at a turn number four, and that's going to be uh, that's going to be helping him out, of course. That won't be there for long, but 33 laps in, he's already pushing away, and now we have a caution. And it's oh. issues with Brandon Cruz, and he just got nailed. Stopped at a turn number four in the center of the racetrack, and some driver came slotted in, and it was a heavy hit, I believe, from Borgstad, who got him hard in turn number four. And this incident between Krutz, or rather Krutz and a double O of uh, Gabranski, goes back a couple of laps. Krutz had made contact with a 17 a few laps ago, had got up to fifth at one point, fell back down to seventh, and it looked like Grabanski had a really bad corner, just lost all his momentum, and an Andy 3 slid into and got around. That was one thing. Caution was out, but Kruitz really took a big hit when that second car, I guess third, to make contact in that group, uh, came in there and caught him late. And sometimes when you look at an accident like this, you could say that the driver could have done something about it, and then uh, you know, could say that because it's dirt, you can't slow down. But when a caution does come out, it should alert all the drivers to slow down. I think it could have been maybe preventable, but it's still really difficult to get out of an accident like that on a dirt uh, dirt surface like this. It's, it's hard to to change your direction uh, just because you're, if you get on the brakes, you only typically have a right front brake and then you just start sliding. So uh, definitely something that's not good for, uh, for those drivers involved. But uh, when you're on a dirt surface like this and you only have a right front brake, uh, that is what typically happens. So that's obviously going to hurt uh, Kruitz's night. He's ninth position last at a lead lap. Just want to update you on a Bergstadt, who was the driver who uh, was slow with a corner. That got tagged, but at 93, he's on pit road three laps down. Not out of this thing yet. Uh, and also, uh, Lid and Pina, who started in ninth position, is 14 laps down in 11th. But at least still on the racetrack so far, nobody has retired from tonight's Eldora Championship 100. Pace truck back down and again. We'll see what happens amongst your top three on this round of races. Green flag flies as we go back underway. A good jump for the top two as Crowder got caught trying to guess it. Yeah, and they got really stacked. And that 51 on the inside, that's going to be uh, Paytac. He was really close there on the inside as well, trying to get those positions. And... Uh, he's going to be stuck on the bottom for a little bit, as you saw last night in Bristol. Uh, he gets actually a little bit of a tag for the 97. He's going to try and pitch it down to the bottom. He's going to slide up right in front of the double zero. And you can see that he's losing a lot of space. He's going to the very bottom. He's not trying a middle line, and that's hard to do. And you're going to see some contact behind him. Looks like the double zero just threw the 17 in the wall. Used him up. 17 got walled for position number six as that battle continues to go on and it's far from done because the 17 is not going to let the double get away but in front of the field the battle is for third. Crowder feeling the effects of not having a stellar restart. He's got the 97 of Adam Zach on his inside. Then he did it a slot him side by side in a battle for third. Not all that far behind his bait tack. And again it is important to note for the drive of the 51. He won just one week ago for Williams Grove as Crowder gets into the fence in a battle for that number three spawn. He's not happy with the 97. So Paytac came into tonight as we noted Coop. 73 points off of a championship against Polly. Well, Polly is not here for this race. So Paytac needs 75 points to be able to take the championship, meaning he needs to finish sixth or better to take the title. Yeah, very important night for him and for a lot of other drivers. I keep seeing that 27 hit the wall. It seems like uh, that 27 car has been used up already by lap 42. So uh, he keeps hitting the wall. And 
That's going to be, it looks like the double zero almost made him hit the wall that time. And I'd say that top line may not be where it's at anymore, Evan. They've been using it so much that they may have to resort to the middle line here. And I've seen a lot of drivers do that. The 51's been doing it and the 97. Look how far away he is from those guys. He's already up there. Oh, looks like we got a 17 car around. And that's going to bring out the caution. Bedford issues it a turn number four. He and the Dondi three machine have gotten together. Yellow flag at a fly at lap number 43. We'll take a second look at this one. It looks like Cruz just got into the corner a little bit hot, caught up and tagged the 17 and it sent both of those cars around. And that kind of goes right back to a point that I was just about to mention. As you take a second look at the LSR TV replay, Coop, is there, there is no middle in, in common terms, I guess, because you can enter low and exit high or enter high and really exit high. Nobody is diamonding and then swooping down low. So the issue with Crowder is the outside has been the fastest lane to come off of the turn, but he lost two positions off of that restart by drivers undercutting him, slotting up in front of him at the center of the corner. And you saw it just a couple of laps ago when he had the not new or the fifth with a pay tag right in front of him and a double O on his door. He just had nowhere to go. So I think you are going to have to be a little bit more aggressive if you're in that uh, 27 camp because he's now down with a race low, his seventh position, and is hitting the pit lane under the caution. Yeah, and he's going to get a fast repair here, as a lot of other drivers are too. And I think if he's going to get one right now is the best time to do that because uh, 11, uh, 46, uh, it's going to be halfway probably before they're done with this race, uh, without the 100 lap race. And uh, I think he's going to be able to really, uh, to really uh, benefit off that because halfway through the race, take your uh, take your fast repair. Hopefully, you don't get as much as you did the first time. Uh, and so he'll be back out there. He'll start at the end of the line, but uh, it'd probably be a lot better for him. Probably have a way better car to deal with. Coverage of tonight's Outlaw Late Model Dirt Series is brought to you by Top Step Trader. Trading reinvented. Our mission is to empower anyone, anywhere to earn their financial freedom and pursue their dreams. And our vision is to be where the world goes to safely engage in and profit from financial markets. We believe that empowered people yield great results and that our users should have a good experience. You become our next success story and join our team at TopStepTrader.com. Green flag back in the air with now 48 laps in the works, close it in on a halfway point in tonight's Adora Championship 100. Laid off, trying to defend Cabri and battle for the race lead. The four continuing trying to work the inside. And the 12 just has been so dominant ever since he got that uh, that lead. And he hasn't really done anything but run the high line. And we've said that some drivers are having an issue running that high line, and he really isn't. He's been able to pitch the car just right in the corner. And uh, as he's doing that, there is going to be another caution here. It looks like uh, perhaps. Uh, Pina is going to be a part of that one. The caution flag is just back out, and incident uh, a little bit deeper in the pack in this one. Obviously, not what uh, Lita and Pina wanted. He's going to continue to cycle him to the back, and well, this checks us up right at lap number 50, so no better time to take a look at our iRacing. The midway race break brought to you by iRacing, the leading online racing simulation developed for the beginning as a centralized racing and competition service. iRacing organizes, hosts, and officiates races on a virtual tracks all around the globe. But in the fast-paced world of esports, iRacing is your one-stop shop for online racing with officially sanctioned series by the likes of NASCAR, IndyCar, IMSA, the World of Outlaws, and more. Cross Flags points has Brett Laidhoff for the race lead to Chase Cabry, who runs in second. Craig Adams, Zach is third. Matt Paddock's up to fourth and Evan Black recovering to P5. Dr. Rabransky also recovering from being uh, in an incident earlier. Kroots, he's going to find himself in the seventh position. Bedford is going to be in the eighth position. Ashton Crowder finds himself all the way back in ninth. Cole Bragstadt will start, or he'll uh, start this restart on 10th, four laps down. Leon Pita. He'll start 11th, and then the other two drivers did not uh, start this race, which would be Thorns and Lynch. Look top to bottom at your iRace to the midway race break. For more information on the wide variety of sim racing possibilities online, you can visit iRacing.com and sign up today. Very relevant tonight with the Dirt Late Models on track. If you want to sign up for a first-time iRacing subscription, you hit up iRacing.com forward slash World of Outlaws. You can get a one-year subscription for over 50% off or get a three-month trial for less than five bucks. It's valid on new iRacing memberships only at iRacing.com forward slash World of Outlaws. Late half second time in a row in control as he gets on the gas he gets back underway tags the fence on the outside of the racetrack Avery charges from second can't get him out of two 
Yeah, and Lehoff, he's still up there and uh, being able to fend him off. A lot of chaos behind him. A lot of drivers close and uh, three wide there for a little bit there for the fifth position right there. Black and start, he's still trying to keep that position around and looks like the 17's going to get turned around back there again to cause another caution. Looks like Bedford is absolutely just being used up here. But we've been talking about drivers getting roughed up a little bit, and I think that one driver we noted was getting roughed up a little bit was Ashton Crowder in the 27, and I said he's pro probably going to get a little bit more aggressive and maybe a little bit too much. I don't know if the 17 was checked up because of the double low in front of him, but Crowder was just significantly faster than those drivers, and I think the double low got into the fence. It checked the 17 up, and Crowder wasn't able to, and he tagged the 17, hooked him around, and then there was a little bit more contact. Uh, between Crowder and Pina. So second to consecutive incident in which the 44 gets roughed up a little bit. Not going to hurt those cars all that much. These dirt late models are made for a little bit of rubbing and racing, but you want to obviously limit that as much as you can. This race is starting to run at a time past the halfway point. We count down with a restart that'll be with about 42 laps to go. So if you're planning for the go or for those guys, you know, 6th, 7th, and 8th, where the incidents have been coming from, uh, you're going to have to start walking up the scoring pylon sooner than later. Yeah, and for drivers like Ashton Crowder, Bedford, and uh, I think the 90 of Borstadt, he, uh, all three of those drivers, I think, took uh, repairs, and they're still back there, and they're still banging on each other and hitting uh, the wall themselves and other drivers. And, you know, whenever uh, it comes to a race like this, it would, what matters, I think, to me, or and I think to a lot of the other drivers, uh, I think would be track position here. And uh, I know they need to get their cars fixed up too, but the guys up front, they're still there. And the guys in the back, uh, they, they're still there too. It's hard to pass at a track like this, especially with as much wear as it has. So that might be something to think about if anyone else wants to come down pit road on like 57 or on. The very thin line between that rubber and groove and the outside fence is where your leaders are going to come single file at a turn number four. Green flag flies once more. 57 laps complete. Laidhoff really liking the outside of the racetrack, and I think that that is the place to be up front. Cabri in the four continues to try to work at the bottom, and I think that Ford performance entry in second needs some green flag laps to be able to get to work on them. Yeah, and these guys are starting to get a little bit more spread out here. Looks like the battle for third, though, is a little bit closer. Uh, looks like Adam Zach, he's going to get in the wall just a little bit right there, and he's going to bring the 51 all to the top side, which is where the 51 likes to be, the 27, or, the, or I should say the 97, likes to be there towards the uh, towards the bottom, as you can see his distinct uh, his distinct line as compared to everyone else, and it's working for him typically, except for that one time he got in the wall. So now he's going to be able to maybe get away from the 51, but... Those two out front, they have kind of been in a league of their own at this point. Looks like maybe the double zero just got into the wall right there uh, going on lap 61. And there's a very thin middle line that's an option. The Basically, the whole racetrack is rubbered up going into turn three and into turn one. But when you get to the set of the quarter, the bottom lane is and the top lane is, but that middle is open. So these guys kind of have to slide for a little bit in that black stuff to be able to get to and find where that grip is, set her off for the quarter. And I think that Paddock has kind of seen that Adam Zach has figured that out a little bit. And he's more so, I think, trying to mimic the line of the Donnie Savage because Adam Zach is getting away from him and would like to close it on Cabri in second, the four into the outside wall that time. He has just moved up now from consistently trying to run the bottom to the higher line in one and two as Laidhoff has this thing dialed in and is checking out. You know, watching these guys uh, on this track reminds me of the uh, the truck race that happened in real life whenever they, they had more and more laps on the track they just got more and more rough with it they got all more out of shape and i think we're starting to see this with the with these guys here in the uh, in the virtual sim is the fact that the track the more it gets used up the more uh, they're likely to, to hit those walls and uh, hit each other here too it looks like a battle for a position right now evan black's trying to hold off his top five position against uh, ashton crowder right there crowder trying to make his way back through the field right now crowder's trying the bottom of the track and he means the bottom of the track right here. He's going to slide up, slide job right there in turn number two, right in front of the 92. And what a, that was executed probably as good as you can get it.
Yeah, if somebody's going to get into your back end and they don't want to lift for you, oftentimes you can get in a world of trouble. But that was pretty much spot on, courtesy of the 27 to Crowder. Slide jobbing Evan Black for fifth position. As the 27 really tries to work his way back up to the front. He's got that spot that's good. Biggest problem is now he's 3.4 seconds off for the race lead and nearly a second behind Matt Paddock, who runs in a fourth position, who seems to be pretty comfortable at the moment in that top step trader dirt late model running 2.8 seconds himself off for the race lead and I think as you take a look at the standings 30 laps to go the next time around Cabri I think is more so going to have to be looking at Adam Zach at the back end because Leithoff is now 1.6 seconds in front of him and an 97 continues to be what is the second fastest car on the racetrack with the beside your race leader yeah and he's consistently two tenths faster than that four right now and so uh, you'd imagine that when it gets to him, he's going to try and just uh, try and make the move uh, either on the top, try and slide in on the top or go to the bottom. Uh, right now, he's got to try and figure out a way to get by him quickly. It looks like he may have gotten the wall just a little bit on the front stretch, uh, front stretch but uh, he once he gets to him, he's got to figure out a way past him pretty quickly. Otherwise, uh, he's going to be in a world of trouble because uh, if he wants any shot at that win, he wants any shot at getting to the 12 car he's gonna have to do it pretty quickly and right now he's losing uh losing time losing speed and losing the fourth car right now and he's got to get around that four pretty quick time is running out best case scenario for the 97 would be to obviously get around Capri, and then for some of the guys at the back to mix things up get into each other and then he would be able to restart right off for the back of the 12 a late off and maybe do something with him but for the time being cleated green throughout the field top to bottom we do have a couple of those impending battles though Capri and Adam Zach going to fight for second here shortly uh, Paddock and Crowder I think are going to fight shortly as well because Crowder is closing in on that number 51 but she runs it fourth so uh, we're about to reach a culmination of two fights inside of the top five which could get a little bit dicey when it happens you know, not only that, but also is a championship possibly in the line if things get uh, things get physical between the 51 and the 27 as well. I think the uh, I don't know if Paddock knows that he's in a position to take home the hardware right now, but uh, I feel that if he's uh, if he's trying to get as good as he can get in this race, he's going to try and at least fight him uh, with uh, with all intended purposes of just getting the, the better position right now. So. Crowder getting on his bumper pretty quick, and then also Adam Zach was pretty close to the floor that last time by. It's going to be uh, kind of watching these guys. 25 laps to go, now 24. And Evan Black is somebody who came into tonight with the absence of Jordan DePauli, your championship leader, as somebody else who had an opportunity to take home the championship. He came into tonight 89 points off of the top spot. But the race win pays out 100, second place pays out 95, and third pays out 90. So if he were to get either of those positions inside of the top three, he could, in theory, take the championship home. The problem is he got in an accident earlier, and he is currently behind Paddock, who just got passed up by that 27 of Ashton Crowder. So Paddock now down to fifth position. That pays out 80 points at the moment. The 51 is still, we believe, in the championship lead. But if Paddock would be to continue to fall, and Evan Black would still have to get up to third nonetheless. But if that happens, this seat may not be quite over with 21 to go. He's got to get, uh, or he's going to have, he's gonna have to basically fend off the 92 at this point. Both of them are trying to get as much as they can to uh, see how many points they can score, of course, like anyone else. But uh, those two, knowing what they have on the line, I have a feeling that they're going to try and either be conservative or more aggressive, depending on how they feel in the car. I can see the 51 is trying the bottom side, maybe more uh, conservative line, but with that, the uh, the driver behind him, Evan Black, he's actually catching him just a little bit per lap, and knowing what's on the line, that could change who wins the championship, despite there being a championship driver here. Uh, Polly could actually win the championship and not even be here, which is a pretty big deal when you consider it, so... 51, 92, that's the battle we'll have to watch and see if that ever happens between these two drivers. And again, Paddock, fifth is okay. Even sixth would be okay because he needs to make up 73 points. He would get 75 for the number six spot without any bonus points being factored in. But not all that far behind Evan Black. And again, Black has to get to third regardless of where Paddock is. And he would need Paddock to fall outside of the top six in order to take over that spot. But not all that far behind Black is Kaz Bedford. It is two seconds. That is where the 51 could absolutely fall no further. 
And the good news for him is time is continuing to run out. And I think maybe by running behind Crowder, he's figured something out because Crowder caught him pretty quickly, passed him rather easily, but has not been able to run away. The 51 is holding strong right now in fifth. And Evan Black just destroyed the turn two wall right there. And I think he's really struggling right now to keep that car uh, in uh, intact really right now. He's uh, smacked the wall a few times here in the last few laps. It's just getting a little bit more difficult. The more laps you run, the more difficult it is. I mean, that black spot on the track is almost all the way down into turn number four. And it's uh, it's it's a difficult part if you're driving these cars to uh, to make it through that and uh, not uh, not spin out, not have any issues. Uh, as the 51 is starting to reel him back in also can't forget about uh well it looks like it's going to be some lap a lap car behind the 97 so that's not a battle for position but uh it's still getting a little bit hairy up there as well but the 51 starting to reel crowder back in as well Unless we forget as we close it on 10 to go that it is still Brett Laidhoff in this race lead, currently running 4.4 seconds in front of Chase Cabry, is taking really this thing over in the closing laps of this one. Laidhoff so far this season, he entered tonight 13th at the championship standings. He does have a win on the season in his only start. So not being able to make up the bulk of this championship. However, if he's able to lock this thing out, he would go two for two. The points won't show for it, but two trophies and two starts would not be bad for the 12 and could really lay the foundation for maybe a championship run if he decides to return to this Outlaw Racing Series Top Step Trader Late Model Dirt Series. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. If you're thinking about it in, the, in those terms, I think for anybody, that's a that's a good statistic to think about. Is that uh, you you join two races, you won two races. That's that's darn good for for anybody to think about. Even though they've only got seven races, a lot of drivers just can't to make the commitment to uh, to come out every caution. That happened. Oh, that changes everything. Caution flag is going to fly, and quite literally, this does change everything because. Well, Laidhoff thought he was running off into the sunset, and we have a caution flying with eight laps to go. I believe it is Kroots in the 93, uh, who got sideways in turn three and four, came to a very slow speed sideways. But uh, if it's not him, then I, I fail to see the other driver involved. If it is for the 93 of Kroots, uh, that's an incident in which... Uh, can typically go either way, but the iRacing service drops the yellow flag, and we're going to have a late race brawl for the checkered flag at Eldora Speedway, eliminating the nearly five-second advantage that Laidhoff had. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure it's even for the 93, to be honest with you. I, I have no clue what that caution was about, but uh, nonetheless, the iRacing service decided that someone was... Uh, in the wrong place and decided it was going to be a caution so we're going to have less than five laps to go here at this start and that's going to make it really fun here for us evan but for those guys now on the track it's going to be i think uh, really exciting here so this is where things get very critical this is the final race seventh race of this top step trader late model dirt series part of the outlaw racing series championship race tonight from eldora speedway late hoff obviously looking for the win that's critical but again the center of the pack is going to be wild auto restart and matt paddock again by our math has to finish in sixth position or better to take the championship away from jordan Pauly, who came into tonight with a 73 point advantage we're gonna get one final time to go at it five laps left to go a race win and the championship on the line from the biggie green flag flies they're gonna sink five but look at that pass for the lead the four goes to the inside and overshoots it he's not gonna get the position but what an effort for it he's gonna try it again i'm sure in turn three he's gonna get right there in front of him and the crossover here for the lead four laps to go and the race leader see, has seen that coming. He's going to take the lawn away from Cambry, but he messes up in turn two. A mistake by Laidhoff. Cambry going to go to the inside. Side by side for the race lead. The four throws it in once again. He will get the get lead. It. Not yet, but it's still side by side at three to go. And they're going to trade this until the checkered flag. I guarantee it. But the 12 had a really good entrance in the turn and exit. He's going to clear him. And then there's Calamity behind him oh. as well. Oh, into the wall. 
Both drivers gonna get checked up. Here comes third, fourth, and fifth. Somehow, Laidhoff is still your race leader. At two laps to go after Cabri bombed. Turn number four. Penultimate time down the back straightaway. Look at the inside. And on the seven of Adam Zach trying to throw it in. Maybe he'll put a slide jump on for second. He will. Cabri tries to oh. go to the inside. Ashton Crowder is there. Contact in third. Final time in the battle for the race lead. Adam Zach to the inside of Laidhoff. The 12 up on the outside. The slide oh. jump at a turn four. He cross him up and Laidhoff. Final wow. time at a turn number four. Spectacular win. Last five laps was probably some of the most intense racing I've seen here at Eldoran. That was good, hard, clean still, despite the, uh, the the contact. It was still clean in a lot of races I've seen here for that win. And wow, that was that was close. And we'll have to wait for the official word in the championship. Paddock got up as high as fourth in that run. Does bring home the checker in fifth position. But what a run for Brett Laidhoff. He had to hold off Chase Cabri. It looked like Cabri had it at three laps to go after the 12 made a mistake. Cabri was throwing it into the inside and getting there, but the 12 was beating him off of the corner consistently. He made a mistake. Cabri got control of this race, and it almost like to pay it back. Then Cabri had that big error in turn number four. Could have taken both he and Laidhoff out of this race. The 12 recovered a hell of a run by Adam Zach out of nowhere coming from third at two laps to go to lead it at a turn number four but just as the 12 had done almost every single time Cabri tried to cross him up he saw it coming he waited on it and he drove it off to the inside to take the win in this one by seven one hundredths of a second and that's one of the more intense and close battles that you'll see at Eldora just you know we did get a five lap shootout there towards the end but as, uh, as smart as some of these other guys were, I mean, he knew that he couldn't just go for it because otherwise he's going to slam into the 97 and ultimately lose the race. He had to be patient along with going for it for that win. And that that's one hell of a last two laps, as you said already. And uh, that that's that's kind of what it's all about, I think, in racing is, is racing just like they did uh, these last five final laps. Let's take a look at our full race results tonight from Eldora, brought to you by Joel Real Timing, the official timing software of LSR TV. Whether you spend your time on the sim behind the wheel, on top of the pit box, or from the spotter stand, JRT is your go-to software for iRacing timing and scoring analytics. You can get yourself a basic download to get the pro version today online at joel real timing Com. After 100 laps of action tonight for Rossburg, Ohio, Brett Laidhoff is able to hold on surviving a wild five lap to go shootout to take home his second checkered flag on the season. Adam, or Craig Adamzak, fantastic result at a valiant charge with the Donnie 7. Slide job on Crowder at two to go. Tried the slide job, your leader in the final quarter comes home in second position tonight. The 27, despite the fact that he was in position to maybe race for the checker in this thing late is able to recover very well from having problems in the middle of the race comes home in third position just behind him chase cabry comes home in fourth position that's the lowest that he ran all night long and it happened to be at the checker tonight matt panic in fifth position we believe unofficially maybe take it home your championship tonight we'll wait an official word he comes home fifth finishing in the sixth position kaz bedford and then you've got evan black finishes in the seventh position brandon Kritz. Our uh, crews, I'm sorry, they will start or will finish in the eighth position. Scott Kerbinski, he finishes ninth, tenth finishes Cole Brokestack, and then on eleventh place finishes Leiden Pina. Look top to bottom at your LSR TV full race results. We'll take this opportunity to step aside. You're watching the Outlaw Racing Series, Top Step Trader, Late Model Dirt Series at LSR TV post race show from Eldora when we come back to your home for sim racing.
racing. You wanted the best. You got them for a breast. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt. The world of outlaws. Okay. Welcome back live to the Eldora Speedway following a wild conclusion to tonight's Eldora Championship 100. It is the 12 of Brett Laidhoff who ends up at Victory Lane on this final race of the Outlaw Racing Series. Top Step Trader, Late Model Dirt Series at LSR TV. Your home for sim racing. We saw those thrilling five laps down to the end of it and no better way to chat about it than with the driver who was a part of it and ended up in front when it was all said and done. Brett, congratulations on the win. Six laps to go. It was a completely different race. You guys were out in front. Everything was good. Over four seconds to second on the back. And then a caution for the back of the field. Single file as you guys back up. How concerned were you at that point? Because we had seen cautions and kind of check you up for the race lead, but... You kind of had everybody's number on all of them. You were able to get a good restart and get out in front. And Did you think that you were going to be able to do that, or were you really nervous and it ended up getting absolutely wild there? So just tell us about how all that shook out. Yeah, I knew the haymaker was coming on the restart. You know, to run a line that I was running, it takes, you know, three or four laps of consistency to go. And I knew I was going to have to probably come off of that line or protect at some point and, uh, chase and i started going at it and i ended up clipping the inside wall on one and then he kind of did the same thing in three and that kind of threw us all up in there and it created a really good finish you know i obviously didn't want to see that last caution but you know the car was good and i was just kind of riding biding my time but that that caution i did not want to see it i knew it was about to happen so obviously you get the yellow and, and this racetrack was really worn in even by the time that the race started because of all the heat racing and such. There wasn't much of a turn three left on this track at all. Uh, you guys have been running the, the top side of the racetrack pretty effectively. Obviously you knew that those guys were going to be throwing it in on the bottom there and then you and Chase kind of started exchanging crossovers there. Uh, was there any thought maybe to just protect the inside right off of the restart and modify your line or were you banking on at least trying out what you had and, and then just kind of going after it because the, these races and if some only watch the final five laps of this thing you know they'll think that it's a crapshoot throughout and and when you get side by side racing with i guess it ended up with five drivers there at the end at one point after you and the four got together i guess the four got into you but uh, it, it was crazy but there is a little bit of you know planning and, and trying to figure out your line in this race and we could definitely see that on the green flag racing but it really looks like that when you get a restart like that you just kind of flip a switch and the strategy's out the window and you're just going for it yeah, you know, when when the racetracks that wore in and were that late in the race, it, you know, it's hard for me to deviate from what I've been doing the whole race, but in the back of my mind, I know it takes me a couple laps to get going. So you're somewhat hoping those guys get a bad restart, and Chase got a great restart. He pulled down in there, and as soon as I got to the start-finish line on the restart, I had to flip the switch and just throw everything I just did out the window. And I, di I did not have a chance to really, you know, I got to the bottom a couple times in three and four, when I was out front and tried it, I never really went to the bottom and wanted to, except for the start of the race when I was working my way through traffic. But, yeah, you know, it's a gamble, and you got to stick to what you know, but you got to kind of flip the switch and just go all in at that point. Something else that we were talking about over the course of this one is that it was the, the last race of the season, and there were a couple of guys, uh, you know, a little bit deeper in this thing who were fighting it for the championship, but it was all said and done. You guys weren't necessarily in that position because of the limited starts, but you take two green flags and you take home two checkered flags, so I guess that's got to feel good. Yeah, it's a great group of guys to race with. They're uh, very clean. They run a good show, and it's very enjoyable. The setup they provide us with is is very raceable and it provides good racing throughout the field it's not you know not real one line dependent and that's what you saw tonight you know and i personally thought it was a great race you know yeah it was probably a snoozer there for a while but that restart i'm still shaking from it it was pretty awesome 
We never have any objections to have a late race caution and a restart. I know it's not what you guys uh, would have liked to see. Uh, a win is a win, whether it's by four and a half seconds or by seven tenths of a second with all of the sheet metal torn off of it. But at the end of the day, you guys take home the checkered flag. Brad, who makes it happen for you? Uh, I got to thank Black Hole Motorsports, Joel Putty. Uh, those guys, they do a lot, do a lot on the uh, asphalt side. I kind of help them out with the dirt stuff. Uh, Craig Adams, Zach, ran second. We do a lot together. You know, we host a lot of races together. So, you know, coming into this, I've got a lot of laps at this track, but we didn't, you know, the setup, you don't know what it's going to be. So that was kind of helpful that we do all that hosting, you know. Um, you know, the guys that run the series, that's it's awesome. They do a great job. I can't wait for next season. I'm definitely going to run the whole thing next year. Well, we speculated earlier on in this race that if you can close this thing out, your second start, your second win, that that might kind of lay the foundation of a challenge if you are to compete in this series full-time in the future. So the gauntlet has been thrown, Brett. Uh, we appreciate, first off, being a part of this event with you guys at Eldora, but also for you uh, sticking around, chat with us. Congratulations on the win, and maybe we'll see you guys down the road. Definitely, guys. Thanks for broadcasting it. I think that's something we really needed, and it's awesome. I hope, uh, hope everybody enjoyed it, and maybe we can do it again here in the near future. I can promise that we enjoyed it. I can only hope uh, that if you guys go back and check it out, uh, that uh, it's as much fun taking a second look at it as we had up here. Topside, Coop, that's your race winner tonight for the Adora Speedway. Brent Laidhoff taking home the checkered flag. Only two starts on the season, so not in the championship battle, but two starts and two wins. He says he's ready to compete full-time in this Top Step Trader Late Model Dirt Series in the future. So a part of that wild run to the end was Craig Adams, Zach, and Ashton Crowder. They come home in second and third of position tonight. Your track side with both of them, beginning first off with the driver of the 97. Yeah, here at the 97 of Craig Adams, Zach, and with five laps to go, you have a restart. You start third, and you go as far back as almost a second behind in fourth place, and then you had a shot at the win, Craig. Uh, go through as how that worked out for you uh, going into the last five laps. I mean, it was chaotic, but I'll tell you, from our point of view, it was probably some of the most fun racing that we have seen. Uh, tell us how it was in the driver's seat, though. Well, I'll tell you, I was just going to be happy with a third or fourth place finish. Obviously hoping for a third, but uh, I was rolling the middle through most of the race, and I was just kind of holding my own. I wasn't gaining, I wasn't losing, and I was just like I say, when it went green, I was like, I just got to stay with these guys and hopefully not get past. And it got pretty hectic and nobody was really lifting. So I didn't either. And I, I knew I couldn't run the top. So I, I started rolling it around the bottom and it, I started passing people. You know, I got underneath Brett there and on the last corner, I, I tried throwing a little bit of a slider on him and uh, it wasn't quite enough, but I'll take it. And talk to us about, like, maybe if we had one or two more laps, if uh, I know this would have probably been a completely different story if it was seven laps to go instead of five, but do you think you would have anything for for Brett, knowing that he would have probably crossed you over and then you may have had the outside? Uh, do you think that would have been beneficial for you, or do you think five laps was your was your shot at it? Uh, I You know, anything can happen. Yeah, I race against Brett a lot, and he's tough to beat, so... I'm not going to sit here and tell you I was going to gonna beat him, but I gave it everything I got. Now, going forward through this season, it uh, looks like you're going to finish the season out at least fourth. It looks like maybe you'll get another position. Uh, I have to check the uh, official standings after this one is over, but uh, still in a good standings, and uh, you'll finish at least top five here. And uh, going forward for the next season, uh, will we expect to see you the next time here? Oh, yeah, I'll be back for sure. Well, we, uh, we enjoyed watching you out there, especially with those last five laps and uh, kind of an out of nowhere from fourth to second and two laps to almost get the victory, Craig. And before we let you go, who makes it happen for you on that 97 machine? Well, definitely, uh, I got to thank Top Step Trader for putting this series on. Uh, this was the first time I ever ran a series like this, and it was it was a blast. But uh, that's pretty much it. Top Step Trader and uh, Matt and Brandon and everybody that puts the league on. Well, there you have it. Second place finisher, Craig Adams Zach. He'll finish in the second place position. And then we'll go down the road on Pit Road and go to Ashton Crowder, who will have finished in the third position. And I'm going to be with uh, him in just a second. 
and there he is. Ashton Crowder finishes in the third position. Ashton, you ran on asphalt yesterday, and you and I actually uh, rubbed a little fenders yesterday. And then today you're on uh, today you're on dirt. Completely different thing, but you definitely showed that uh, you could handle both. Yeah, um, I actually signed up for this league. I think right after the race ended last night trying to find something fun to do and decided to come run super late models at Eldora, which uh, one of my first times really running it. I've done, you know, brawling sessions, we'll call them with friends and, you know, random hosted sessions every now and again with these cars at Eldora, but I never have really done a long race longer than like 10, 15 laps. So it was new for me. It was a, it was a fun challenge and, uh, P3 isn't too bad. I really choked up on, uh, you know, early in the race, but uh, came back out a solid finish, and uh, I'm not going to be too mad with third. And you started those last five laps, and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about. And sadly, the other 94 and a half laps don't really matter. Uh, those last five laps were definitely what the, what the buzz will be about. Um, talk to us through your point of view, seeing all the crossovers in front of you, trying it yourself, getting a position before it was all said and done, and getting on the podium. Uh, talk to us about how that worked out for you and through your point of view in the cockpit. Well, uh, I started in P4 position, and uh, off the restart, I didn't really get a good restart. I couldn't figure that out all night. I don't know if they're clutching it or what, but uh, I was just, you know, getting on the gas. Nothing was working, but they started throwing big-time sliders, and I saw uh, Avery just straight-up send it, and I was like, man, we got to dig this on the top, and nothing really happened until about one lap to go. Um, Chase got into, I believe, Brett. And uh, slowed him up big time. I don't know. I think I passed him on the bottom. Uh, I was told we were like three wide. I I never heard a three wide call. So thankfully, nobody really got wrecked there. But uh, yeah, you know, they're throwing sliders. I uh, I didn't want to throw a slider because didn't want to wreck anybody and ruin my race. So it was pretty fun though. I'm uh, I'm really new to this whole dirt thing. So like I said, you know, third place isn't bad, but fun really fun five laps well if you say you're not very good at it you still did a very good job i say at least and um third place is definitely not too shabby before we let you go of course ashton you know how it goes uh who makes it happen for you on that number 27 machine uh you know the big tom crowder crew giving the support every week except uh, today because i believe justin listenby is at school um but then you know we got the drill spill the big tom team Danny Freeze series, build and setups, and then we got JDR Graphics, who, uh, you know, JD Larity made this car within, like, four hours. I told him, I was like, hey, man, you know, give, give me this paint scheme right quick, please. Be a, be a big time. He got it done. Looks awesome. Looks uh, just as good as Logan Clampett's car, which I believe uses the same color scheme. So, uh, big shout-out to him. Big shout-out to you guys, too, for doing the broadcast, and, uh, Big shout out to uh, League for putting on this show and uh, creating a really good 100 lap race. There you have it, third place finisher Ashton Crowder, and then I'll give it back to Evan Pasoko, who has maybe caught up with our championship winner. That's right. We made sure to, to hold off on it, chatted with race officials, and we do have the official championship results. And as we had been saying over the course of the night for Matt Puddock, we had thought that he needed to finish sixth position or better to get the title away from Jordan Pauly. He comes home at fifth tonight. We thought that would be enough. And upon looking at the final championship standings, to the tune of only seven points, it is enough. And the driver of the number 51, Matt Puttock, is your championship winner. Locking it up here tonight from the Eldora Speedway. Matt, congratulations on what was a solid result for you guys. You needed a top six. You get a top five. So you're the champion of this Top Step Trader Late Model Dirt Series. You got the sponsor on board. You got the championship trophy. It's a pretty good night. Oh, yeah. It was a great race. That was a crazy finish. I couldn't believe uh, the result of that race when we got that uh, caution with five laps to go. I was expecting chaos, and that's exactly what we got. But it was really a lot of fun, and I want to thank the sponsor, Top Step Trader. Shout out to my brother, Mike. Mike Patak. Hope you're watching. Uh, yeah, like, uh, check him out, topsteptrader.com. It was a great race. Like, that last five laps was fantastic. I didn't know that I had to get top six or top five to get the championship series. So when the points were calculated and I saw that, I couldn't believe it. So 
I really wanted to get top three. That was my goal. But uh, you know what? I'll take it. That was a lot of fun. It kind of leads right into what my next question was going to be. How hyper aware were you of, of where you needed to finish? I know that coming into this race, you had to have noticed that, you know, championship leader wasn't in here. And you knew that a 73 point margin is not impossible, but would need a solid finish out of that. Was that on your mind at all? Uh, if you were in a situation, especially late, because if this race was just going to coast home when we had about eight laps to go or so and everybody was spread out, it wouldn't be that big of a deal for you. But I think especially how crazy that restart was, were you out there intentionally trying to just maintain where you were running or was it just go out there and run it as hard as you can and see what happens? That was a saving grace. I went in with full ignorance. I thought having the championship leader not show up would essentially just lock me in. So I was pretty much like, I fooled myself into being too overly confident. So I was just like, whatever, I just want a top three. You know, I just want to get a top three. These guys are really fast. The top three would be a huge victory for me. And like, but then when I realized, like I said, I had no idea. I think that's what really gave me kind of the confidence and the composure just to pull up top five. And uh, yeah, it, it worked out for all the best. It was a great finish. I want to thank all the guys in the league for coming out racing. We're going to start up again. Uh, after week 13, I think we're going to get uh, some new tracks for the iRacing update. Those will be on the schedule, similar format, but we're going to iron out some of the bugs and stuff. So next year, next season, not next year, next season is going to be even better. And hopefully, wink, wink, we'll get our sponsor back on board again, Top Step Trader. Well, you're making sure they got a lot of airtime in this one to round out this season, you know, with another top five finish and all of that. And we've often seen in championship weeks where a driver is so aware of the points that they kind of psych themselves out and just not not race at all. And sometimes when you're trying to really take it easy, you find yourself in some issues. So as you said, maybe just not being aware of that at the moment kind of helps you out at the end. But uh, you guys get the most top fives anybody in, in this series, and I think tonight officially rounds that out. A couple of guys got six top tens, uh, and you matched them with that here tonight. But for you know Jordan not showing up tonight and then being able to get a top five, which is what you needed to pass him the championship on the last night, and that top five to me to give you the most top fives out of anybody, I feel has to be good. But you know you look at this season start to finish, you guys parked in a victory lane at one point. I'm sure that uh, you, you're happy with the overall result. Absolutely, yeah. That one victory at Williams Grove was a hard-earned victory. These guys have been really good competition. Uh, Jordan, it was a shame he didn't show up. I'm not sure what happened there. We'll have to get a word later on. But uh, like that guy is a solid driver. And so to just to be able to sneak out a you know a, a victory like this, I'll take it against him. But uh, you know, I want to thank everybody. Thank you guys as well for hosting uh, the the stream for us. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. We appreciate you spending uh, your time and chatting with us, Matt. Congratulations on the finish tonight. Congratulations on the championship. And uh, best of luck, I guess, going forward to you and everybody. And hopefully we'll have an opportunity to catch you guys again. Thank you. I appreciate it. So that is your championship winner. Matt Patak comes home on top of it all. He is the champion of the inaugural Outlaw Racing Series Top Step Trader Late Model Dirt Series. And you can see the sponsor on the logo. The sponsor was on the side of his number 51. So we'll make sure to give another shout out. To the people who make it happen here tonight, coverage of this Outlaw Late Model Dirt Series has been brought to you by Top Step Trader Trading Reinvented. Our mission is to empower anyone, anywhere to earn their financial freedom and pursue their dreams. And our vision is to be where the world goes to safely engage and profit from financial markets. We believe that empowered people yield great results and that our users should have a good experience. Become our next success story and join our team online at topsteptrader.com. Com. With that being said, Coop wraps up tonight's coverage from the Eldora Speedway. I said it at the top of the show, but I'll say it again. Uh, we have so much fun week in, week out, being able to bring to you guys the same series to work through a championship, but it is oftentimes equally as fun to just kind of get a one-off event and have fun with it, and I love dirt racing, and it's the first time that I've uh, done top sod for a dirt race, and it's been exciting. I will have to say, though, that we do have some other dirt stuff that works, and we would love no more than to see these guys back with us at LSR TV and I Racing Live, but the bar, I think, has been set, in my mind, for a standard on how these dirt races are going to finish, because that was a thrilling race. 
Yeah, and I think that's what the what, that's what it, how it's supposed to go. Is especially how those last five laps went. I mean, the entire race was was really good as well. But um, sometimes when it comes down to a race like this, it kind of to some people and to us actually too. Is those last five laps mean a whole lot more than the other ninety five, and um, this kind of puts our foot in the door. You know, if they want to, we want to see more dirt racing, and uh, you know, we'll we'll they'll, uh, we'll be in contact, and maybe that'll happen. But yeah, more dirt action definitely something that uh, I think all of us are looking forward to and as uh you know it's been in the works for it's still you know just a baby on the uh iRacing service so um definitely more to come for sure and as this week continues with lsr tv and our racy live we're gonna head to the asphalt we'll keep the short track theme because we've got back-to-back -back weeks of the championship esports association myrtle beach simulation series that's going to continue right here on lsr tv tomorrow night at nine o'clock eastern time and then we'll also be back at it at the end of the week this coming friday with the super speedway cup series as always you can get a look at our full upcoming and extended broadcast schedule on our website at www.liveserracing.com i also we encourage you though to make sure you're up to date and follow us on social media twitter at lsr tv and on facebook at facebook.com forward slash lsr tv official until next time as we head out from the eldora speedway on behalf of the entire team at live sim race at llc for dj lion laura loss and the people top side to make it happen week in and week out night in and night out and of course for the team tonight for myself evan pasoko for austin coop and cisco scarabusa congratulations to brett Lanehoff. he is your winner of today's Eldora Championship 100. And then, of course, congratulations to the 51 of Matt Patak, who comes home as your Outlaw Racing Series Top Step Trader Late Model Dirt Series Champion with his finish here tonight. We'll catch you next time on the dirt right here on LSR TV, your home for sim racing. Until next time, good night.